Food selfies? Food That'd selfies. Awesome. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, don't drop your phone. Ah, as I need to get a case for this one. Up, right? What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you're into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today we are busting out our cell phones because let's be honest, the cameras in these are actually pretty awesome. And we always have these on us. And you know, like a lot of photographers would tell you, the best camera is the one that you actually have with you. So what I want to do is show you some of the things that you may not know about taking pictures with your phone, especially when it comes to photographing food. And so if that sounds good to you, you stick around. So very first tip, super duper easy, you can do this no problem, is to make sure first of all that you know where the camera lens is. So here on my iPhone, it's here right on the back. But then what happens over the course of the day is this ends up, you know, in my hands, it ends up getting thrown on counters, ends up in my purse, in my kids' hands, ends up with smudges all over it. So if you've ever taken a picture and you're like, why is that so fuzzy? Or it's got this kind of like glowy thing that maybe you didn't mean to do, maybe you did, but <laughs> if you want to clean some schmutz off, so that you can get a nice clean picture. Well, you just take the back of your shirt and just rub it down a little bit, make sure it's clean, and you've got a nice clean lens to work with. Okay, so the next is once you open up that camera app or whatever you're using to shoot the images in, please turn off the flash because if you use the on-camera flash from your phone, that what that's gonna do is it's gonna really wash out your whole scene, you're really gonna lose any sort of depth or dimension, it's gonna feel super flat, and so be sure to turn off the flash and then find some sort of good quality light source that's gonna help make your picture look good because just like we we've talked about in so many of the other videos here on this channel that light is what makes or breaks a photo. It doesn't matter what camera you're using, it's all about the lighting. So for me here today, I am using natural light. I've got a south facing window, but I am diffusing that. I've got a diffuser in front of it, my big giant huge freaking diffuser in front of that because it's Arizona and we do not have a cloud in the sky. It's really harsh rays. So I want to diffuse those, make it a little bit softer. If you want more insight on natural lighting, feel free to jump Jump over to the playlist that I have linked right up over here. No, but it's right over here. <laughs> I had to look at the screen and be like, which way? I'm not in my usual spot. But if you need a diffuser and you don't want to spend any money, then you can certainly use just like a white curtain or some sort of thin white sheet, anything that's going to make that a softer light. That's going to really help in getting a nice picture with your phone. Tip number three is to watch out for some of the fancy modes that your camera can do. For example, here on the iPhone, you've probably heard about this or you personally have it on your phone, the ability to do it in portrait mode, which more or less what that's doing is it's emulating the sense of aperture that you've got a really narrow depth of field versus a wide depth of field because that narrow depth of field really brings attention to your subject which is great in portraiture also really great in food but you do have to really make sure you're paying attention because I have had more than one situation where I have photographed something especially when it comes to drinks or anything with a stem or some sort of straw or garnish that it will fuzz out things that it's not supposed to fuzz out because it's not truly acting like the aperture in a typical lens would do, it's creating a mask around the subject. And so you can see just a couple examples where I've had a couple portrait mode fails. So this is again something you can definitely use for food, it can make it look really cool, but just make sure that you're paying attention so that you don't lose certain important details. Tip number four is that you don't have to shoot inside of the native camera app that comes with the phone. You can actually shoot inside of other apps that come with some additional bells and whistles. A lot of folks like to shoot in VSCO or Visco Cam. For me, I like to shoot inside of Adobe Lightroom CC, their mobile app. It has got some pretty nifty bells and whistles that I want to walk you through. So if you've downloaded Lightroom CC onto your phone and you open that up, and this is a free app, I believe it's $5.99 a month if you want some of the pro features, but otherwise totally free for what we're doing here today. And so if you go into the shooting, you open it up here, we launch it up and we open up the camera. And then you see these three little dots along the side there. You open that up, this is gonna give you a little menu of options and so you can of course change the aspect ratio depending on the specific place where this image is going. I usually keep it in 3-2 but maybe you want to do it more in a 4-3 so it's a little bit longer or if you are going for that Instagram story then select the 16 by 9 or you can just shoot it and crop it later. Totally up to you but that's where you can adjust that aspect ratio and then you've got a timer there if you're doing some sort of like shoot 
shooting yourself in some sort of elaborate scenario, which we are not doing today. Uh, you can also set up grid lines, which are super duper helpful if you are doing a flat lay or if you're doing something straight on and you want to make sure you've got everything properly aligned straight up and down. Also a helpful guide for if you're following the rule of thirds in terms of your composition. But then the next one, the little triangle, this one I love because you turn this on and it says show highlight clipping. And what that's doing is showing you anything that is going to be overexposed when you shoot it. So anything that is super duper bright and you're gonna lose all the detail in it. Now it's not bad to have overexposed things in your picture. I mean, according to me, and I'm not necessarily the authority on that, but I would say if you like the way your image looks and you're okay with certain parts of it being blown out, that's great. But at least this will sort of give you a little Little warning of like hey you've got way too much light coming from this source here in the background this is causing things to be blown out then just at least then you're informed all right so then from there if you go down to the bottom where you see where it says auto you hit professional because yes my friend you are professional <laughs> and we are gonna open up then an additional menu of options here and so you can adjust the exposure say you're looking at the picture and you're like it's really really dark then you can slide that up or down to adjust to make it a brighter or a darker exposure now next in the menu you'll see seconds and this really to me doesn't apply so much for food photography because we don't have a lot of motion going on but this is more or less getting at your shutter speed and so if you want a situation where something is gonna come across as blurry. So maybe you've got somebody running past the camera or you've got you know, some sort of something being poured and you want it to look really kind of flowy and you don't want it in sharp focus, then what you wanna do is bump that down to a slower shutter speed. We could decrease that down to one over four, something a lot slower so that we're capturing that motion. Now on the converse of that, if you've got something that's moving and you wanna capture it in still complete focus, then what you wanna do is use a faster shutter speed. So in that case, go to like 1 300th of a second or 1 500th of a second. That's a really fast amount of time for your shutter to open and close and capture what's happening in front of it. But if you are familiar with the way that cameras work and operating a camera in manual, the faster the shutter speed, the less light that is letting in, the darker your exposure is gonna be. So you're gonna wanna be in the right sort of lighting scenario if you wanna get those super high shutter speeds or you compensate with your ISO, which then brings us to the ISO or the ISO, which is your camera's sensitivity to light. So the higher that is, the brighter your exposure. But the thing to bear in mind is that the brighter that exposure gets thanks to ISO, the grainier the image will be, which if you're going for like maybe like a filmy quality or you want sort of like a grainy artistic image, then you rock it on with your bad self. But if not, if you want a sharper, cleaner image, keep that ISO low. So then next in our menu of options, we have got the white balance. And this and the way this works here is actually one of my favorite features in the Lightroom CC mobile app. And so if you open that up, what you'll see is you've got a menu of options of what is your white balance scenario. Because as we've talked about before in a white balance video right up here, is that this is more or less the concept of anything that's white, how close to true white is that based on the color temperature of the lighting scenario we're in. So if we're in a restaurant, then that's gonna be more orangey light. And so the camera is going to adapt and accommodate for that, making things more blue so that it feels more balanced to true white. As opposed to the middle of the day when you've got natural light coming through a window, just like we have here, which is sort of dead set in the middle of the color spectrum. So if you go into the white balance menu, you'll see you have all these options. And so depending on your scenario, you can pick one. Like if you're using, you know, incandescent lights, you go ahead and select that one. Or if this is in the sun, in the daylight, you pick that. Or if it's a cloudy day, that's gonna help determine again what is your white balance but what I love to use is the little eyedropper there because that is custom white balance and what it's telling me then is to pick a neutral surface so you find something in your scene that is a white or a gray some sort of neutral color it's not cast toward blue or toward orange or red or green it's a very nice neutral color like this white tablecloth and then you fill that and then you hit the little checkbox and then what that's gonna tell Lightroom is okay that is a true neutral neutral and so then to cast everything else within that white balance spectrum. Makes sense? Makes sense? Something to play with. Play around with it. 
Now next in your menu of options, you'll see this little plus sign inside of the brackets. Right now what that's doing is it's saying it's auto selecting your focus point so that it's saying, okay, that we probably should be focusing then right here on this pizza. Well, if say for example, you wanted to focus on the back pizza instead, you just open that up and you shift that and that is going to shift where the focus is landing. So you can be a little creative. And then if you get in there and you're like, oh geez, I've just screwed all this up. I need to start over. <laughs> How many times are we there? Like, oh, I just need to start over. That's why the good Lord created the reset button. Now, one other feature that is definitely worth mentioning is that some phones like this one are able to shoot in RAW so that you can make a selection between RAW and JPEG. Now, if you're not familiar with RAW, go ahead and grab this video right up here. It explains all the details of that. But what we can do here in Adobe Lightroom is toggle between DNG, which is a file format for RAW according to Adobe. And so we can either have DNG or switch it over to JPEG. If you are worried about file size and storage and issues like that, then JPEG is probably gonna be the direction you're gonna wanna go. But if you want a greater degree of flexibility, especially in editing to reclaim colors, to reclaim light, all those things, you go ahead and jump over to DNG. So we are de-smudged. We have got a custom white balance rocking. We feel like total professionals, we are ready to take the shot. But now what you got to keep in mind is the angle of approach. And as actually written by Bon Appetit magazine and certainly plenty of other professionals in the social media world will tell you, when it comes to taking pictures of food, a very flattering and very popular angle for online is either going to be the overhead or the straight on. And so you can see this image definitely lends toward the overhead. So that's how I'm going to shoot it. But if you are going to shoot something at the head on angle, we're not talking the three quarter like that you know 45 degree angle we're talking head on but here's something to think about again going back to where is the camera actually located on the phone and when we're on the phone like this it's located up at the top right well if you try to take that image it's still gonna be a three-quarter angle no matter how you try so there is nothing to say that you can't just flip your phone upside down and take the shot, right? Because what you're gonna do is then you're literally going to be head on at the food and getting that head on angle that feels monumental, that feels huge. If you want more about how to kind of compose and set up a head on shot, I've got a video all about that right up here. I've got a video about everything at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's it gonna be like in like two years when I've got 200 videos? Lord have mercy. So we line it up, we take the shot, we check it out, reevaluate, maybe make some adjustments to the composition take a couple more shots and then it is time to edit and so we are gonna do that next week so what you want to do is go ahead and hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you do not miss that one it's gonna be a lot of fun we're gonna deep dive further into Lightroom CC and really walk through what's my editing process so that we can make these photos look super extra and so thank you so much for stopping by the studio hope you learned a thing or two certainly if you take any pictures on your phone or any pictures in general you're welcome to tag me on Instagram I am at the bite shot. I love to see what you're working on. And so with that, hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you stay out of trouble and I will see you soon. Okay. Bye. How about duck lip? High five.